I've had interest in a long time in seeing if you can use the change in focus value of a camera to accurately estimate the range of objects in view. Here's a demonstration of what I'm talking about. Um, as I adjust the focus value, you can see that the sponge just came in focus and now it's getting out of focus. And um, now everything is out of focus. But as I change the value again, the stuff farther away starts getting more in focus. First the sponge, then the piece of paper, and now the purple towel in the background. So the same idea was used by naval ships to estimate the range to another ship before blowing it up. How did I use what I just said um, to compute the value of a pixel programmatically? Well, what I've used in the past is um, edge intensity. Um, I've used that to selectively focus a camera on certain objects. I would first detect object, and then I would um, determine if the edge intensity was at maximum. So here's what happens if I compute the edge intensity for each focus value I just showed you. You can clearly see a wave of bright pixels just go through the image. And now everything is getting dimmer because everything's out of focus. Go in reverse of direction, same thing. That wave is just going back and forth as I change the focus value. So this is actually looking very promising. If I can figure out what the peak is, I should be able to estimate the focus value. And then from that, I can get the depth information from the depth. I can compute a point cloud. What you're seeing right here is the results of me trying to estimate the value for each pixel where it has a maximum edge intensity at what focal length. So um, a certain pixel, if the focus was at control value 200, it would have a value 200. If it had a maximum and edge intensity at focus value of 5, it would have a value of 5. Um, closer pixels tend to be brighter, indicating that their control value is higher versus ones in the distance um, are dimmer, indicating that the control value I set the camera for the focus was a lower value. But how did I come up with this? So I first found the peak value for each pixel independently um, where the edge intent, like the focus value was at maximum. I then checked to see if that edge intensity value was above a threshold. If it wasn't, I set to zero. And then I also checked to see if the neighboring focal values um, were significantly different from the peak. Basically, is it like a very distinct local uh, minimum or sorry local maximum or is it a kind of like a flat region so if you just had a, a part of the image that was all monotone you would expect it to have pretty much a constant um, like a low edge intensity value and then a constant value across all the focal lengths so the next step is to take this and convert it into a point cloud which is what you see right here um, to get this point cloud, I assume that the control value I sent to the webcam was inverse, had an inverse linear relationship with depth. So far this actually looks pretty good, but let me move the camera a bit. Yeah, this is not looking actually as good as it did a moment ago. There's a whole bunch of smear. Like I would expect that um, sponge to be a very thin object. I mean, you do see some smear similar to this in stereo vision. But this is way worse than any stereo camera I've seen. Let's go look at a top view. You can kind of see that uh, this guy, the sponge, is a little bit closer in its um, maybe center of mass than the blue piece of paper, which is what I would expect. And then um, back here is the purple towel, which is behind everything else, so that's also you want to get. So. It's not totally random, just not that great. Um, the accuracy definitely goes down the farther you get, and the accuracy was never good to begin with. And there's all these random points all around. Um, let's try tightening up some tolerances and see if we can filter out more. Here's what it looks like after additional filtering. It does actually look significantly better. Still looks like crap compared to what you get from pretty much any other sensor but it's not totally random. The stuff that's in front is in front, um, and the stuff that's behind is behind, just not really the distance you would expect. And um, what's on the ground, you can see this is kind of parallel. I mean, this is kind of on the ground relative to the piece of paper and the sponge, which are more vertical. So it's something, just not all that great. Yeah, let's try to explain this by looking at that intensity image again. Now, as I move 
change the intensity value, you can see things get bright and dark. But when they get lit up, it's not just like a thin band. Like if this is a really precise technique, you would just see a single band going across here and then everything else would be very dark. What you're seeing is like several inches actually gets lit up at once, indicating that's very crude. And there are multiple focus values that light up the same pixel. So this is really hinting that I didn't mess up any of the image processing later on. It's just like something that's fundamental to using focus and edge intensities the way I have. Now, maybe there's some really fancy technique you can use where you um, reverse out the camera properties, um, but it's probably all very complex and computationally expensive. I would actually be really interested if someone has some working code um, based on some paper so I can actually understand what's going on that does a much better job on this, like especially these images. So not some special high precision camera, but like a webcam type thing, preferably the same data set that here. Um, but from what I'm seeing right now, I bet if I spent two to four weeks on reading a whole bunch of papers from the 80s, which is when people were discussing this more, I would not actually get significantly better results. I mean, just what you're seeing right here, like a whole bunch of pixels get lit up at once and it just comes across as a very crude technique. But as I said, maybe um, there is some really fancy thing or a better model to use which would clean everything up. But for now, I'm kind of thinking that you can only use focus values to tell something is right next to the camera or far away, but not much more than that. All the source code for what you've seen here, including data, is available on GitHub. Um, and as I just mentioned, I would love it to hear from someone if they have a, another, um, some ideas on how to do this better, and especially if there's source code. So that's it for now.